Three, two, one. Good day everyone, Garage King here, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to use your Creality Falcon laser printer, cutter, or engraver, however you want to call it, in under five minutes. Well, maybe close to six minutes. It just depends on how well I can edit. Five, six minutes is all it's going to take us to go through everything very, very briefly. Now, this isn't my first video. If you want to see the unboxing video, I'll throw up the link. But now that I'm getting more comfortable and I'm making a few more things, I'm definitely seeing the value in this Creality machine. And here you can see, if you take a quick look here, I've made a little Garage King tool pouch. Looks pretty good. Now let's get going and show you how to make one. So first we got to go to craftseek.com. That is where you get the software. You can see there it's Windows or Mac. I have a Mac. So once I clicked to install the software, you get a screen like this. Looks like it can be overwhelming, but it actually isn't. So we go into the corner of the screen. We go file, create new project. We're going to get a little prompt that's going to pop up that says it's going to erase everything that we did previously. That's fine. We're going to start on a fresh slate. Here's our line engraving and image engraving settings. Now these are important to know because they are based on a preset value that is determined by the substrate of the material that you're using. So here you could see we have, I'm clicking bamboo, paper, there's acrylic, you can see there's metal on the side, there is leather, there's just a bunch of stuff. But all it's really doing is it's going to change those predetermined values. But once you get familiar with the machine, you can modify those values to whatever you would like. So for example, you can see here we have line graving, we have speed at 11,000 and we have power at 100. Now if we go to, for example, let's go to line cutting. You can see there it reduced our speed to 600, but it left the power at 100. Now here for fill engraving, speed is 11,000, the power is 50. Let's pick another material. So if we go in here, for example, we are going to pick paper. Paper is very, very light. It burns easy. So look what it did. Speed 5,000, but the power is only 15 because you really don't need a lot of power when you're using paper. So now that I've showed you this, let's turn it on and try it. It's very important to know that. Now, in order to import our image, we're gonna go on the side. We're gonna click that button. This box comes up right here and you can see we can pick an image. Now, PNGs I find work very, very well. You'll get a warning prompt many, many times. What that means is just your picture is too large. So I'm gonna use the trackpad on my MacBook Pro and just adjust the image. So we're just gonna make it a little bit smaller and then we're gonna center it. Now what's important, and this is what a lot of people I think struggle with, is we're gonna use this framing button here down at the bottom. So once we drag it to where we think it has to be, we're just gonna press the framing button and the printer will actually do an outline without cutting where it's gonna be. Now here's my frame settings. Now I always put power to one, you can see it's down low, Speed is at 6,000, so it moves fairly quickly. The reason I do the power at one is because you get a small green dot because the laser is so weak, it won't cut or damage the fabric, but yet you can see it. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is this camera. So you can see it was attached to the front, and if you press the button up there, you can see that was a green button there. You, there it is in action, actually printing. So the camera will look down on it as it's printing. So that's kind of a cool thing. Now back to the framing, back to the framing. We got to keep on track here because we want to get our video, you know, done quick. So you can see I clicked frame and you can see it's drawing it here. There you go. It's coming around. Now it's too big. It's off the leather. It's, it's actually too big. And there you go. There is the green. So it's, it's hard to see, but I wanted to highlight it once just so you know, you would all know where it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm speeding up the video here. You can see we're, we're still not where we're supposed to be. So I'm going to drag it around. I'm going to click frame again. And there you go. We're getting a little closer. Still not so good. Let's try some more adjustments. And there you go. We're getting to where we're supposed to be. Let's check this out. I would say we're good there. Now, the other thing you want to do is click the preview button right there at the top because it'll give you a preview and you want to make sure there's no lines or anything hidden on your PM PNG file. Because if there is, and sometimes you can't always see it, it will show up in your final production. Now, if you have a long piece of material that you have to roll up, you can see here I use some paper clips to hold it. And if we pan over here, you can see Mr. Turtle is keeping watch, but he has a purpose. He's actually making sure that the leather doesn't roll up. So I was just using him to hold the leather down and it worked like a charm. The other thing I did wanna mention, you do get some smoke. So you may have neighbors that think you're having a bonfire when in fact you're not. 
Hopefully you can see in this video clip there, the smoke that is actually coming out of my window. So I was really happy when I purchased mine, it was the enclosed version that had the fan. So very happy about that. The other thing I wanted to mention is you can do multiple layers. Here you can see me lining up the Porsche with my Garage King symbol. I'm gonna frame it right here and we're gonna see how close we are. Let's speed this up. We are looking good right here. Now let me show you what I was making. Now I know the one in the printer was red, but this one's brown, but I made a bunch of them. Why did I do this? Well, the reason is I'm getting ahead on my Christmas gifts. So I let the cat out of the bag. So anyone that knows me that's watching these, well, you kind of know what you might be getting for Christmas. So if you're wondering what I'm using here, I was able to source everything from Amazon. This is two millimeter thick material. Uh, the rivets, I believe they are made out of copper. I'll put all the links below and even that little tool I'm going to show you in a minute that sort of sets the rivets right here like this. Let's just give it a tap. It makes the rivets look really good. Kind of like the kind that are on your, you know, Levi's jeans. It just looks really, really, really good. So I was very impressed the way they came out. Here's the end result of the red one that you saw in the printer. Super happy about it. Hopefully this video, now I'm seeing, I'm just passing the six minute mark. I've showed you how to use it. If you have any questions, anything like that, please reach out. I am Garage King. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and I will see you all soon. Thank you.